Okay, so um, I think it's time. Welcome, guys, um, to another beautiful, beautiful session of our uh, question and answer. All right, uh, like I said, the EasyFX Free Group is currently now operating as a platform for getting your questions answered. All right, and at the same time, learning as much as possible as you know as we are able to afford. All right. Uh, so for tonight, I am going to be taking questions. All right. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask, please tap on the speak button on mute your mic and ask me your question. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who's coming up first? If you have a question, just unmute your mic and ask your question. I really would love to see, you know, um, you guys ask as many questions as you have, as many questions as possible, uh, because it's my own um duty to ensure that you find answers that give you peace of mind, all right, and clarify things completely. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Bubaka. Uh, okay. My question is, uh, uh, every day when I come into the, the group, when you, okay. when you guys are analyzing the markets. Okay. Uh, I always see you analyzing the DXY. So this okay. DXY is so powerful that you have to analyze it before getting to know what to do next. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Mr. Abubakar. That's a beautiful question. All right. And I'm going to give you answer to that question by going into the DXY chart right now. All right, you can unmute your, you can mute your mic in the meantime, all right, so that everybody will be able to hear me clearly. Thank you. All right, so this is a chart of DXY, all right. Uh, if you check it from the daily time frame, you see that my bias on DXY as being that DXY is supposed to be bearish. All right, so I wanted to check, uh, okay, this bearish move started on the 8th of March, all right, on the 8th of March, which was a Wednesday. All right, 8th of March on a Wednesday. All right, so if we have a commodity like, um, let's say, Euro USD. Okay, if we have a commodity like Euro USD, um, we know that when dollar is weak, sorry, when dollar is weak, what do you think should happen to Euro USD? Euro USD should be strong. All right. That is the logical thing that is expected. OK, so let us look at it. This was 8th of March. All right. 8th of March on a Wednesday. So let's check Euro USD starting from the 8th of March. All right. This was Euro USD on the 8th of March. All right. This candle here. OK. And what do you notice at that point? This was. 8th of March, all right, like I said on the DXY, and you notice that that was the moment where this powerful bullish run started on Euro USD. Okay, so what we use DXY to, um, um, you know, to do is what I call a correlation analysis. All right, we use it to perform correlations in the market because the DXY tells us the strength or the weakness of the dollar. All right, let us go ahead and check gold as well on the 8th of March. All right, 8th of March should be somewhere around here. All right, good. This was 8th of March, right? 8th of March on gold. And what do you notice? The movement that's, that started after the 8th of March, all right, on gold, all right, currently is about 23,000 pips, all right, starting from that 8th of March till today, which is April 13th. Okay, so what we use DXY to do, all right, is to give us a general overview of the strength or weakness of the dollar. All right, so when the dollar is strong, we sell Euro USD, GBP USD, gold, um, and maybe even Bitcoin sometimes. All right, but when the dollar is weak, it means that we're looking at buying gold, buying Euro USD, GBP USD. Uh, we're possibly also buying Bitcoin. We're possibly also buying um, stocks, all right? Um, a few stocks like, uh, if, sorry, not stocks, indices, all right? We're also talking about buying indices like US 30 and the likes. Okay, let me quickly show you what I mean by that. Um, US 30 on the 
daily time frame will go to March 8th. All right, 8th of March. Where are you? Where are you? All right, beautiful. This was 8th of March. All right, uh, on US 30. The move did not immediately begin because US 30 needed to come into a comfortable demand zone. But you see that all the same price shot up. All right, you can also check US 100, which is NASDAQ. All right, March 8th. All right, on the 8th of March, you see that that's the same thing. This is the 8th of March. We only had a small dip and then price responded according to the direction of the bias from the DXY. All right. So, Mr. Um, Abu, Abu Bakr, is that clear now? Do you get why we look at DXY before we take analysis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Who else has a question they would like us to address? Like I said at the very beginning, this is a question and answer session. And our aim right here is to ensure that we provide you the, the, you know, the kind of answers to your questions that ensures that you never have to ask those questions again. All right. So who's going up next? Who else has a question they would like to shoot at me? I'm waiting patiently for your questions. Please ask your questions right now. Okay, sir. There is one last thing that I want to clarify before we move on. All right. Uh, with you. Can can I actually know how to how to get a pip count of gold? Because every time I try to calculate how a pip is in gold, I actually get to become confused every every time. So if you can All right. actually try that. Um do you use MetaTrader four or five or do you use trading view? Which one? I use MetaTrader four. Okay. Um if you use MetaTrader come in. I want to show you how it's done on MetaTrader, actually. All right. Okay, so on MetaTrader, when I want to do a pip count, all right, um, let's go to gold. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Go, go. Okay. So this is gold, all right? When I want to do a pip count on gold, what I do is you hold the shift button, all right? You can come here, click on this, all right? Control F, the cross here, all right? Then you click on the spot where you want to start counting from. Let's say I want to start from here, all right? Then you, um, you left click and hold, okay? Then you can pull to the point where you want to stop your measurement, all right? And what you notice is, uh, there's a bar that is now showing beside the cross air. All right. There's a bar showing beside the cross air showing, it's showing two, three, nine, five, zero points. All right. Two, three, nine, five, zero points. So what we simply do is to convert that point to pips, we divide the points by 10. All right. So that tells us that this was 2,395 pips on gold. All right. So that's the, quickest and easiest way to do pip count on gold. Have I answered your question, Mr. Yakubu? Okay, so can we do it on, on trading view? Okay, on trading view, it's a little bit different. Let me go to trading view. All right, let's go back to trading view. For trading view on gold, let's go to gold. All right, say we're starting from, maybe we're starting from here. All right, this point right here. On trading view, you need to hold the shift button. All right, you hold the shift, make sure that you are on the crosshair. All right, then hold the shift button and click. Okay, when you click, you don't have to hold. All right, on trading view, you don't have to hold. Just hold the shift down and click. Okay, and once you have clicked that way, you can just measure what you need to measure and then hand it. Okay, so on trading view, let me zoom in so you see what trading view is showing us. All right, you see that trading view is showing 23510.7. All right, 23510.7. So that is 23,510 pips because on trading view, trading view will automatically calculate um, the pip value by itself. All right, the p value is automatically calculated by itself on trading view. 
Um, that's why, let me go to the one hour time frame so you can see what I mean. From here right now, all right, shift up, all right, that is 4,338 pips. Okay, and that's a movement that took us about how many days? Um, 22 candles, all right, 22 candles on the one hour time frame, which is equivalent to a day, all right, about one day. Do you get it now, Mr. Um, Yakubu? Yes, sir. So, so for example, if I want to count uh, the fifth between 1992 to 2000, how much is it exa exactly? All right, between 1992 to 2000. This 1990. is 1992. Yep, 1992, right? 1990. Okay, 1990 to 2000. All right, yes, so let's sir. go to 1990. This is 1990 here. Yes, I hold my shift. And then I want to go to 2000. This is 2000. All right. And you discover that that's about 1000 pips. Do you see that? But the yes, reason sir. why, the reason why it's not going to appear as, you know, 1000 pips per se is because if you are not using a broker that is a US based broker, all right, the way US based brokers present their pip calculations for gold, is a little bit different than the way other brokers present their PIP calculations. All right. That's why um, if you are the type that takes signals and you're following someone who takes uh, who trades on a U.S. Um, broker, all right, you're going to have issues because by the time they are telling you that there are 50 pips in profit, on your own chart is still going to be about five pips there about in profit. Do you get it now? Yes, sir. Exactly. So if you look here, you see that this is Oanda. That's the name of the broker that is showing us this um, gold chart. All right. And Oanda is a US based brokerage firm. Do you get it now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, I get it. So their, their, their peep count is a little bit different, but it's not something that you should be too, bo too much bothered about. All right. And that's why I usually advise that if you're trying to calculate your um, your position size. You can use um, all these lot size calculators. I think we've sent the link to one of the calculation uh, calculators that I personally use. I might end up resending it into the group later tonight. But I want to be sure that I've answered your question. Have I? Yes, sir. I'm very, thank you, sir. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So over to the next person. If you're here tonight, you have a question about trading, about the financial markets, something you're struggling with. Let's get talking. All right. Let's see how we can be able to assist you with finding fulfillment and success in your trading journey. So who's next? Who's next? Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, please just tap on the um, speak button. All right. Just unmute yourself and let's get talking. Okay. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening, Mr. Israel. Okay, from the this one hour time frame, can you just like um analyze the possible move, movement of gold? From this one hour time frame. Yeah. Uh well, that would be a little bit difficult. But no problem. I'll take a look at that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think that gold is preparing for a major sell. All right. Um, we're gonna be dropping setups in the group. Um, from tomorrow, all right, because I already ran all the analysis required. All right, so you're going to be seeing setups dropping in the signals group. Okay, but this is what I'm seeing on gold right now. All right, there's this supply zone over here. It's a big one, but it's a supply zone nonetheless. All right, um, there's this um, trend line resistance. Then there's this other trend line resistance as well. All right, so we have this um, this other trend line resistance, okay? So this is more like a confluence area or a confluence zone because we have two trend lines, um, you know, intersecting, all right? And at the same time, based on the Fibonacci, we can see that price has exceeded the 88.2% a little bit, okay? So for me, if I'm going to be trading this, remember, this is the weekly time frame, 
So if I am going to be trading this, I am going to be waiting for a change of character on the four hours time frame. What do I mean by waiting for a change of character on the four hours time frame? I simply mean that I want to see a movement of price that breaks below this point, all right, and forms what I like to call an AMD pattern. Okay, so if I'm going to be selling gold, this is typically what I'm waiting for. You can see that that um, resistance order block or that supply zone rather on the weekly time frame. This is us breaking it down on the daily time frame, all right? And this is what it looks like. So until I have a break below this previous low, all right, I am still going to uphold a bullish bias on gold, all right? Is that clear, Mr. Israel? Yes, sir. All right, beautiful. All right. Would that be all? Is that all for tonight? Is that all you, um, the questions you have? Okay, I, I think it's off. Um, so who else has questions they would like us to take care of, all right? Remember, the purpose of tonight is a and a session where you can get answers to all of your lingering questions, all of your pending questions. You know, let us get to treat them and take care of them right now, once and for all. All right. So throw me your questions. If you have a question, tap on the speak button. All right. And let's get talking. All right. Um, Khan, for the gold analysis, it's what you're seeing on the screen. All right. I'm simply waiting for a break below this point, which is the 1984. All right. I need price to break below 1984, then come back for the block before dropping. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Paul or Jebile. Yes, uh, uh, I'll be sir. Thank you for the lecture, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm having a question. Like, I'm still confused on how to treat uh, this FFG, FFL gap. Okay. Like, <laughs> sorry. So, can you please explain, sir, how to treat FFL gap? Okay. Um, the interesting thing is, Personally, I don't trade it, all right? If you ask all of my students that I have shown how to trade fair um, value gap, I always put out a disclaimer, first of all, that personally, I don't trade fair value gaps, all right? And the reason why is because if a fair value gap is actually going to react as a demand or supply zone, all right, there has to be an order block inside of that fair value gap. Don't trust me. Don't believe me yet. Let me prove it to you. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at, um, I'm trying to see. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let's see this. Looking at this, we can see that price has broken structure. All right. This is the daily time frame. Remember, price has broken structure with a fair value gap. All right. Um, so we've seen that the breakout is clear. So let's break that down on the lower time frames. Okay. And I'm just going to mark out some of the other blocks that I'm seeing on the lower time frames. That are happening, that have happened inside of that other block. Okay, this is one. All right, I'm tempted to pick this one too. All right, then I can go back to the one hour, the four hours time frame, and then pick the final one, which would be here. Okay. So what do we want to do next? We simply want to play this forward, all right, and see how the market behaves. Usually for me, I would prefer to use an other block that is closer to the previous break of structure, all right? This was the point where we got the previous break of structure. This is the other block that is closest to that, all right? You can see that this one is a little bit far away. All right, but that's what we've got. All right, and we're going to be working with that uh, for this trade. So let's see how price reacts to that point. All right, which is what, uh, you know, the average 
trader would have referred to as a reaction from a fear value gap, all right, but you realize that it is actually not just a reaction to the fear value gap, it's a reaction to the order block inside the fear value gap. All right, what do I mean? Remember I said I, I would prefer to trade an other block that is, you know, closer to this point of break, all right? Which was why when price got to this particular area, it didn't give a solid movement. All right, you'll notice that it didn't give a solid movement. I'm oh, sorry. However, when it came into this second one, all right, that was when we got the exact movement that we needed to see. All right, that was when we got the exact movement that we needed to see. Can you guys see that? All right, so that is for me how what makes fair value gaps work. All right, because right now, if you now play it forward, you realize that that was typically what just played out. All right, um, and maybe price returns to the other block before pushing forward. All right, maybe, just maybe. All right. So this happens to be our uh, other block. Let's see if price returns to it. All right, beautiful. Price returns to it, then continues its rampage upwards. If you know my style, you know where I take profits are. TP two, three, four, five. All right, and you see that price eats all of our five take profits cleanly and clearly. All right, so is that clear? Yes, sir. So, uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Don't try to trade fair value gaps because of fair value gaps. All right, only search for fair value gaps that have other blocks inside of them. All right, because it is the presence of an other block inside the fear value gap that makes that fear value gap considerable as a strong pivot or as a strong zone. Okay, is that clear? So, so far, I want to crave your indulgence. If you have, um, if you are learning something amazing tonight, I want you to just drop a comment in the, in the group. All right. Just drop a comment, whether it's an appreciation or whatever. If you've learned something so far tonight, all right, drop a comment. We'll spend 30 minutes on this call already. We have 30 minutes more to go about, um, yeah, about 35 minutes more to go. All right, but please and please, if you have learned something, please drop a comment. Let me know how this experience is for you. All right, in the meantime, if you have a question right now, click on the speak button, all right, and let's take your question. So what's going up next? If you have a question, please tap on the speak button. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Please, please, please. Um, don't let's make this boring, okay? Ask a question. Yes, yes I'm with you. Yes, Mr. Uh, Paul, I'm with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the lecture, sir. Actually, uh, I have a little problem with my volatilities uh, in this. It's like, like uh, you know, the way you used to spike. So, um, uh, I'm wait, wait, with wait, 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 wait. Yes, sir. Are you talking about crash and boom? No, 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 crash and boom. It's volatility in five days, to be, to be precise. Okay, V75. All right, go on. Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, I'm, I'm having a problem with the breaker block and the uh, OB. I mean, as a, as a place of, I mean, when I want to enter, no, it will retrace back to either OB or the paper or the breaker block or the paper gap. So I'm having the problem, problem with the breaker block or the OB, sir. I don't know if you get my question. I do get your question. Um, and I'm coming. I'll be with you. Yes, sir. I want to go to my MetaTrader 5 for synthetic indices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. Okay. I needed to remove certain things so that um, some things that I don't want you to see will not be seen.
Okay, so let me share my MetaTrader screen right now. All right, so can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. So uh, for me, one of the biggest ways that I approach synthetic indices right now is to trade it based on the daily buyer. Uh, please mute your mic, all right, so that you can be able to hear me much clearer. All right, thank you. So um, somebody would see this and say, oh, yeah, this is a clear sell, all right? V75 is going to sell. However, I can promise you that V75 is going to break out of this zone, all right? Possibly even break above this particular other block, all right? Um, and maybe come all the way to somewhere around here. And I am not going to be doing, I'm not looking at this based on breaker blocks or whatever, all right? I'm simply looking at this based on my daily bias trading approach, all right? So let me show you a cheat code. Here I can see that um, my daily bias indicator is telling me that, yeah, um, the green line is above the red line, uh, the purple line, sorry, the green line is above the purple line, which tells me that we're altogether bullish on the daily time frame. All right, so let me mark that point. All right, that's the point where we went bullish, all right, according to my daily bias indicator. Now, if I come to the lower time frames, what I'm simply looking for is I am waiting for price. After price has made this movement, all right, there are some other things that I'm not going to be showing you because, you know, what I'm, this thing is actually a, uh, a premium course that I'm currently putting together for some of my students, right? So I might not be able to divulge the entire secrets, but I'm going to show you how this works on synthetic indices. Remember, this was the point where our daily bias indicator told us that the daily, um, that the daily movement or the daily trend became bullish. All right, so all I had to do was wait for price to retrace and into an order block. Um, can you mute can your you mic, mute your please? Mic. <laughs> all right, so you see that price came into this other block at the sniper level, all right, and currently this is TP3. All right, this is TP3, which is already about one ratio six or seven. Let me see, this is um, about 86. This is 756, yeah, which is almost about one ratio eight or one ratio nine. All right, so this is how I address, um, you know, Z75 and almost all the other indices. All right, just check what's the bias on the daily time frame. What's my daily bias indicator saying to me? All right, and then based on that, I take my positions. Because if you check, if you check closely, you see that even when we switched bearish on the daily bias indicator, all right, which was somewhere around here, yeah, this can do. All right, if you go to the four hours time frame, all right, coming to the four hours time frame, I'm looking for. The candle I just marked. Sorry, let me check. Okay. Okay, good. So this is the four hours time frame. Okay. This is where the downward move started, all right? The sell entry. So what I'm simply looking for is I'm waiting for price to come back to any of the major order blocks that are formed. All right, and then you see that, um, yes, we got a break of structure somewhere around here. All right, and then price came back into this other block, started dropping. All right, um, then again, we got some extra other blocks along the line. You can see that this, like I always tell my people, when you see an area where there's a confluence of weeks, all right, it just simply tells you that that is a zone to watch out for, all right? In this scenario, price didn't get to that upward, um, that upper order block, but let me quickly show you on the one hour time frame. I'm already teaching you things that I am not even supposed to be sharing, but nonetheless, I think um, the beauty of this is ensuring that you're able to get things right. Okay, good. So on the one hour time frame, this is the other block. 
If I zoom out, you'll see that that was the exact other block that price reacted from. All right, can you see that? The exact other block, all right, here, okay? After it reacted to this initial other block here. Okay, this was the initial order block. Price got here. Let me show you that quickly. Price got there, went straight to TP3. All right, then we had this bigger movement. All right, um, from this top here, we had this bigger movement. And we still saw price getting all the way to TP3 once again. All right, from here to here, which in this case, this one is about one ratio 15 risk to reward. All right, so this is how I trade synthetic indices. All right, so I don't use breaker blocks, whatever kind of blocks you want to call it. All right, what I simply use is the Templars trading strategy based on the daily bias. All right. The Templar trading strategy is simply talking about, you know, how I use my Fibonacci in combination with um, some other um, some other tools. All right. So that's basically what it is. All right. How I use my Fibonacci to, to be able to map out um, stop loss and take profit areas. All right. So, Mr. Paul, have I answered your question thoroughly and exhaustively? Hello, Mr. Paul. I've answered your question now. All right, it seems is. is yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm listening. To, I mean, I've, I've, I've had you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Okay, so who is going up next? Who else has a question they would like us to address? Any questions regarding the financial markets? This is that place where you can get the answers that you desire. So hit me if you have a question, just tap on the speak button, throw me your questions and let's trash them out once and for all tonight. Hello, I want to ask my own question. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Frank, go ahead. And my question is, you said you talked about using a Templar strategy. My question is this, does it mean that other block and breaker block doesn't work on VIX 75 and other volatilities? Not that it doesn't work, but the challenge is when you focus on, um, on just the other blocks, all right, and you don't, um, you don't pay attention to, yeah, there's is. something called, there's something called order flow, all right? Order flow, market structure, they're still the same thing, all right? So um, yeah. what, the, what I do is that I trade in the direction of the daily bias, all right? So even if I am marking other blocks, I am only going to be marking or considering other blocks that exist in the direction of my daily bias, all right? So if my daily bias is bullish, I am only going to be looking for bullish other blocks. If my daily bias is bearish, I am only going to be looking for bearish other blocks. It's as simple as that. Okay, no problem, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So once again, please, if you've learned something from tonight's session, please don't hesitate to drop a comment. Let me know if you are enjoying this particular session. All right, so that we can be able to decide how frequently we would have you know, online sessions like this. Okay, so please and please just drop a comment. Let me know how this session has been for you. Okay, so who's going up next? If you have a question, please tap on the speak button. All right, and let's get talking. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Teddy. I'm with you. Um, I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on uh, footprint chat? On footprint chat? Yes, sir. Okay, um, thank you for that interesting question. Because um, for you to know about the footprint chart means that you've done, um, you, you've put in a whole lot of diligence into, you know, um, examining and researching about the financial markets. But you see, the truth is my thoughts are simple. In, my, in all my years of trading, I have tried not to use any other chart but the candlestick chart, all right? 
um, I know that there's the um, the different uh, there's Renko, um, there's what's this other one? Um, there's um, I forgot the name of that. Um, all those other ones, all right. I think there should be some reference to them somewhere around here. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There ought to be some reference to them. Okay, yeah, good. So there's um Ikenachi. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to remember. There's the Ikenachi, there's the line break, there's the Kagi. But I have uh, restricted myself to only candlestick charts, all right, because there is nothing as important, all right, as focus and consistency, okay? The difference between success and failure in any venture in life, not just trading, any venture whatsoever the only difference is consistency all right so i have trained myself to work with the candlestick charts consistently all right and by consistent i don't mean that anything that includes corn all right or you know kennels of corn i'm simply saying consistency as a word all right and i'm saying that for nigerians so that they don't assume that i am one of the supporters of corn all right i am not Okay, but uh, when we talk about success in life, all right, it depends largely on your ability to be consistent at one particular thing, all right, focus and consistency. So for me, I have built all of my trading experience on the candlestick chart because I want to be focused, all right. So what's my thoughts on using footprint charts for somebody like you? I would say, please and please, Try not to be a jack of all trades who ends up becoming the master of none. All right. Avoid being a master of all, uh, a jack of all trades. All right. Whatever it is that you find doing. All right. No matter how insignificant you may think it is. If you pay good attention to it, you give it diligence and consistency. I can assure you that something beautiful and remarkable will come out of it. Okay. So. That is my admonition to you, Mr. Teddy. Hope it's clear. Do you get that? Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome and God bless you. All right. So who else has a question they would like to ask? Just tap on the speak button, all right, and then shoot me your question. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, please. Good evening, Mr. Emmanuel. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I like your classes, and uh, I, I really, I really um, want to thank you for this uh, great session. Your service is is quite educative. So uh, I want to ask you, what do you, what do you think of uh, uh, um, card card chef chef and uh, euro 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 card, sir? Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Okay, this is this is looking serious. Um, Mr. Manuel, can you unmute your mic? Uh, let me see if I can hear you and you can hear me. Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Oh, okay. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So um, you can uh, from the daily bias. All right. Um, card CHF is bearish. All right. Clearly so. Okay. However. Like I said, we're, we're expecting to see some um, 
retracement all right you can see that i already backed out this zone as an area where price will react from okay and what am i simply expecting the answer is simple i expect that price would come into this zone all right so that we can go all the way down All right, um, sorry about that. MTN is currently misbehaving. All right, so uh, Mr. Emmanuel, can you see what we're talking about here? Yes. All right, these are yes. the possibilities. This is the first zone. Remember we said the daily bias is bearish, all right. So is it that we get a reaction from, um, from this point? All right, and then price goes all the way, uh, all the way down to this area. All right, or price grabs liquidity. We get a liquidity grab, and then price comes all the way up here. But first of all, I want to see this AMD pattern. I want to see how it plays out. All right, you can see that it aligns perfectly with the eighty-eight percent of my Fibonacci, which is a key point. All right, so um, I want to see that move first before I attempt any other thing. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. So, so you, All what right. was AMD? You... Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Oh, you want me to show an example of that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is what an AMD looks like. All right, so between here and here, you have your accumulation, all right? Then you have your manipulation, all right? Which is simply this fake breakout, all right? Because this breakout okay. was instantly corrected back, all right? It was a breakout that was instantly reversed, all right? So we we'll call that a manipulation, all right? Then the retest. Okay, and you see that that plays out quite nicely. Uh, yes, sir. But, sir, Are we I clear on that now? Are, okay. Yes, sir, but people say people say that in the financial market there's nothing like manipulation. It's just you see that you are taking a wrong trade or you they, I don't know, but they say there's nothing like manipulation. There's nothing they, they what we mean by manipulation. What we mean by manipulation in this case is not that, oh, they manipulated the market per se. No. It is that many traders will be tricked into assuming that this is a buy. All right. That's what we mean by manipulation. Many traders will assume that this is a breakout. All right. A bullish breakout. And they will be looking for a buy somewhere around here. Okay. Do you get it? Okay. They'll be looking for a buy somewhere around here. Whereas, unfortunately, they get caught. All right, so their stop loss gets taken here. So can you uh, like it Frank, inducement? Yep. Mm, yeah, you can, but can the difference is that an inducement. Yes, but the difference is that an inducement is majorly a weak. All right, it's largely an area that is just a weak. All right, you get to see a long week. All right, that's what we mean by inducement. Okay, so if it's not a long week per se, you cannot term it as an inducement. Do you get that now, Mr. Emmanuel? And um, for Mr. Frank, um, yes, of course. All right. We can liken this to a Quasimodo pattern. All right. Whatever you want to call it. All right. Whether it's Quasimodo or AMD, whatever. All right. Mine is just that this pattern is what we're looking for when I mention the word AMD. 
All right. So is that clear, everybody? Are we good? All right. So please, next question. If you have a question, please tap on the speak button, ask your question and let us sort it out. Questions, questions, questions. Bring in your questions, guys. Mr. Bubaka, I'm with you. Oh. Okay, um, Teddy, you can go ahead and ask your question. I wanted you to take a look at um, GPPAUD and CHFJPY. I am only going to take a look at one, all right, because this is not an analysis session. It's a training session. Okay. But nonetheless, I'm going to look at one. So pick which one you want me to look at. GPPAUD. All right, so let's take GBP AUD. Final answer, GBP AUD. Oh my God, this is sweet. If you're on this call right now and you're not thinking about selling GBP AUD, I have no words for you. So I'm going to show you something quickly. Ah, I'm trying to look for the best area that would serve my purpose. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. All right, so now the thing is, if I want to judge naturally, I will be looking for an entry somewhere around here. Not all the way up there, okay? And this would be it. Yep, so I think that's um, GBP AUD, all right, first part. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I think that would be it. Okay, so that's GBP AUD. It's definitely, definitely sweet, sweet sell for me. All right, it's, it's looking so, so sellable. Yeah, so um, have I answered your question? Yes, thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so who else has a question? What would you want us to talk about tonight? All right, just give me one question you would like to ask, and this is going to be the last question for tonight. Who's there? What's there? What's there? 
final question from anybody, just tap on the speak button, ask your question, and let's get talking. Hello? Does anybody have a final question they would like to ask? If you just joined us, this is a Q&A session, all right, like we publicized in the morning. Okay, so that's what we're doing right here now. So who's going, who's going to last? Well, who's going to be the last person to ask me a question? One more person, please. It's almost eight o'clock. One more person. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, sir. The last question that I have right now is uh, about the news releases. Uh, recently, I've about, noticed that sorry news releases, news my news releases. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Okay. Recently, I've noticed that uh the market acts strangely when when new news are released okay at first i thought that it was, it was only the cpi but even on nfp instead of the uh the market to stick to one single direction and keep moving it actually just after it uh, okay for example after it just goes off instead of it to just retrace and keeps moving off it will just come down it will not just only retrace it will, it will not just only erase and and keep moving up. It will just come down to its original place and stay like that. Can you say something about it? All right. So let's do this. What day was the NFP? What was the date of the NFP? Okay. Just this last Friday, sir. Um, that must have been 7th about, of April. Uh, about five days, six, six days ago. Yeah, that was 7th of April. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is on the daily time frame, and I'm just going to look at what the daily bias is saying. So right here, the daily bias is telling me that we are bullish. All right, so what do I want to do? I want to look for the other block to buy from. You can mute your mic for the meantime, all right, so that there will be no interferences while I speak. And um, as a form of confirmation, all right, you see that um, we have this previous eye that has been broken, all right, as a confirmation, all right. So let's play it forward and see. So you can see that for me, I'm not even looking at the news right now. It's just me judging based on the daily bias for that day, all right and um, waiting to see what the price is going to do. Okay, good. Now, this move that you saw, all right, this movement that you saw, you see that it started from the 76.4, all right? Somebody would argue that, oh, that's a movement from the FVG, like the first question that we treated. All right, but let me show you that that is not absolutely correct. Remember, our daily bias is currently bullish. All right. Now, this is the 76.4 area, and I want you to look at it closely because when you do, you will discover that there is a very small other block sandwiched inside the spot. All right, there's that very small other block. So let's go back to the four hours time frame. So that you now see that that movement, that bullish movement was simply a reaction from that 15 minutes other block. All right, and then TP3, TP4, all cleared. Can you see that? Mr. Um, Abubakar, can you see that? Yes, sir, I can see that. I can see. All right. Secondly, let's take a look at CPI. What day was CPI? Who wants to tell me what day was CPI, please? What day was CPI?
I think CPI was um what day, Mr. Mano? Yesterday. Okay, good. Yesterday, yesterday, sir. Yesterday. All right, thank you. So let's go yes, to sir. the four hours time frame. Let's start from the daily time frame as usual. We want to know what the daily bias is. And my daily bias here is still quite bullish. All right, so let's go to the four hours time frame. On the four hours time frame, we're simply looking for the other block that price will react from. Okay, and this is an other block on the four hours time frame. Let's see if we can break it down further on the one hour. Fifteen minutes, let's see. Okay, good. On the fifteen minutes, I'm seeing that there's this area. There's that area as well, okay, on the 15 minutes. There's really no need going all the way down to the five minutes, one minute, whatever, okay. Even though I do that when I want to be petty sometimes, okay. But let's see how the market is going to react to the CPI release. We have created a new other block somewhere down here. But I, I, I can see. Okay. I'm going to break this down. Hold on. Hold on. Let me pause this. Remember the daily bias is bullish. All right. Price didn't get to our other block. And then we got this break of structure. Can you see that break of structure? So what we need to do next is to look for the other block that was responsible for that particular break of structure. All right, so one hour time frame. I'm seeing this candle, all right? Let me mark it out. If you don't understand why I am marking that as an other block, it simply means that you have not taken my course on daily bias or any of my recent courses anyways. But hopefully one of these days I'll be dropping uh, an ebook, all right, a PDF that is free, all right, and it's going to show you guys how I mark out my other blocks. Okay, good. So you can see that that was the other block, all right. Um, 30 minutes. Yes, exactly. Okay, so you can see that's the other block and price just tapped into that other block. All right, price tapped into that other block and cleared all of our five TPs. All right, just because it's CPI. And you see, this was our fifth TP, all right, and that was already clear. And if you even check closely, you see that this already looks like an AMD kind of structure, all right, where we can refer to this as the manipulation. This is the major break, all right, and then a retest, which gave us this move. Okay, so do you get it now, Mr. Yakub? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, beautiful. So, um, the long and short of this is, if you go and check on the FBS, um, if you go and check on the FBS YouTube channel, you will discover that for me, it's mostly, uh, it's, for me, I don't react to the news per se. I don't just depend on, oh, what's the figure? Did they say it is? stronger or weaker no for me i trade um like a predict uh, like a predictive kind of analysis all right because i understand what the market is going to do next even before the news is released okay so it allows me to be able to get into the trade get into the market far ahead of most of the other traders all right and that is the edge that i have as a templar trader all right because Clearly, I'm able to know, all right, this is what's going on. This is what the market is looking like. And altogether, it just gives me a better trading experience. Okay. So, um, this is where we're going to be ending our session for today. All right. Um, we've had so many interesting questions. We've had amazing submissions. All right. And we've also looked at a couple of commodities. Okay. 
So if you want to catch the full replay, it's going to be available on my YouTube channel in the next one hour. All right. So you can quickly go look at it on the YouTube channel and, um, you know, learn from the session that we've had tonight. Okay. Nonetheless, I want you to know that I am committed to your success in this journey. All right. I am interested in you guys becoming profitable and making something consistently for yourself in the financial markets. All right. So if you have any challenge, don't hesitate to reach out to me at FX Templar. I am going to be trying my best to attend to you as quickly as possible. All right. If you're just joining us, don't panic. This session was recorded and you can access the recording on the YouTube channel. All right. So thank you everybody for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasurable one hour, you know, rubbing minds with you, sharing strategies, skills, and, you know, just typically answering your questions. I am honored that you guys took our time to attend this amazing session. And I want to say a big thank you and God bless you. If you are not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do well to subscribe. Click on a like, drop a comment. All right, because I can assure you that I am going to start putting out amazing, amazing content that would help you even further in your trading journey. Without further ado, take care and have a fantastic rest of the week. Bye-bye and God bless you.